So we're going to talk a little bit about um, the, the idea of sharing files offline. Uh, we really want to push the use of Google Drive in our district because there's so many benefits to it. It provides unlimited storage to the kids. Um, it integrates with a lot of the different um, tools that we, we offer and support uh, within our district. Um, and then the ability to use these uh, documents, spreadsheets, slides, all offline is, is really a useful feature. So we're going to show you kind of how to do that, uh, how the students would do it in a Chromebook. So that's the device I'm on right now is a Chromebook. Um, sign in as my son, who's actually a preschooler. So um, we're going to um, go through and, and show you how um, we can uh, access those files, even in an environment where you're not connected to the Internet. Now, as we're talking about this, we're, we're thinking of two different types of uh, documents and files. Now, first of all, you have files that are, you might consider consumables, uh, things like instruction sheets, um, lecture videos, charts, pictures, things that you're not necessarily going to want back from the student. But it's just for their information, for their use. And then there's the documents that maybe are the assignments, um, content that you're giving to the student to edit and then submit back to you. Um, and so those different kinds of documents uh, can take a lot of different forms. Um, we're hoping that you're able to use uh, the built-in file types like Google Docs uh, within Drive because uh, those um, are easily accessible and they're uh, items that the students can um, don't have to convert to another type to, to use with their Chromebook. So right now I'm uh, on my uh, son's account here. I'm in his drive. You'll notice here that I've got uh, several files already shared out to him uh, as a student. Um, I've got five different files here that he's going to be working with. Um, you'll notice that as I'm in the drive, I'm uh, actually looking at the shared with me folder. And my first step is probably, as a student, I'm going to want to take those files and make copies for myself, for my own use. So I would select those files, whichever files those might be. Um, let's say I want to grab uh, these project files, and I want to um, grab also this uh, instructional video. And now I can come up to the three-dot menu and make a copy. As I make a copy, it's going to take those files that I've selected and copy them to my individual student drive. And now that I've got them in my drive, I can um, uh, do what I want with them, including making them available offline. Now, there's two different ways we can make those files available uh, to a student. Uh, we can make them available offline, or we can download them. Now, when we make the files available offline, we are basically making it so that we can make edits to them without internet connection. Um, but then when we regain internet connection, say when they come back to school, all of those edits will then sync back up automatically and um, it will update the file that's in their drive. So with Google uh, type files, Google Docs, Google Sheets, um, Google Slides, and that's what we want to use those for, to make those available offline. And uh, so one way you can do that is by selecting the file that we want to make available and then click the three button menu at the top, right? And the available offline button is right here. I can select that. If I go back and you see now it's, it's activated. This file is now going to be available offline. You can also see that from the little icon next to the file name. So if um, I now want to work on that file and I don't have internet connection at home, it's uh, available to me on the computer to use. Now, uh, one thing we can do as a test for the student before they leave school and go home is we can, at the top of their drive, they have this icon um, that uh, will show an offline preview. If they select that, now you see it's got the um, files bolded that are available offline and the ones grayed out that are not available offline. So that can be a kind of a visual indicator to them whether their files are ready for them to, to leave school and go home. So that might be a nice little feature that they can use.
when they get home, they can come down to their button menu, open up their different apps, and select the Files app. Files app is where they're going to access those files uh, once they're offline. Now, as we open this up, we can see under Google Drive, I'm still connected, so I'm still going to be able to see these files under my drive. Um, but I can also then um, access this file that I made available. And when I open it up, within the document, there is a way for them to see the status of that file. Let's see if it finishes loading. Right here, if we click on the little cloud icon next to the file name, um, you see it says this document is ready for offline use. So that's also an indicator to them that, that file is available for them to use without having an internet connection. Now, if we look at the other document that was not shared offline, we'll see something different. As we wait for this, um, we might uh, remember that these are um, good uh, things for students to know um, whether or not they have internet access at home. Even if they do have internet access, it's still good for them to know how to save files in an offline manner because they may not have internet one day. It may be glitching or, or go offline and uh, or they may be working on a document not at their house so uh, they need to be able to uh, understand how to um, access these files um, in an offline manner. Okay, John, and, question real quick. Um, sure. Misty Lawson wanted to know what does it mean when it says has trouble syncing? It probably has to do with your internet connection. Okay. Um, and so for that, I would say, you know, wait a minute or two, let it try to catch up. Um, restarting the Chromebook is always a, a nice um, first troubleshooting step. Okay. Um, so, you know, that's a All nice right. Way. Another one, Christy Riddle has put in the chat. If we create our files while our Google Doc default, in our Google Docs default to make, off, to make available offline, can this save some steps for our students? For example, once they click on the file in Google Classroom, will the file automatically be available offline? So students don't have to navigate Drive and purposely make each file available offline. Do you happen to know the answer to that question? Um, I don't know. I would have to do some research and test that right. myself. Um, so Eric says if it's in their recent Drive, they can. Okay. We'll see. All right. Thank you, Eric. And by the way, Eric has done a lot of research and a couple of things, guys, in our ACMS HyperDoc, that notebook we have. Eric has a lot of the resources. We posted those in there that he's located and sent to me. So, all right. Sorry to interrupt, Josh. Keep going. Uh, that's fine. Um, so when we're working with files that are not of a Google file type, say just a standard video file that's an MP4 file, um, for those, we don't really have a way to make them available offline. They're going to need to download those to the device directly. So back in their drive when they're at school, if they click on that file and click the three button menu, there's a download option, which will then download that file to the uh, Chromebook. Um, it does pop up in the bottom right hand corner of Chrome there to automatically show it in the folder. 
Again, you can also access that from the files app that you um, have um, on the Chromebook. And so you look under my files, um, under downloads, you know. Um, so um, for those instructional videos, um, charts, PDFs, things like that, um, they're are just the instructions for them. Um, that's probably the recommended way of them accessing them F1 is to actually download them to the device. Now, a thing to keep in mind, especially with larger files like video files and P4s, um, they can get pretty big. Uh, the files in size can be pretty large, so you're going to have to um, kind of keep that in mind. Um, smaller is always better, usually. The devices do have um, around 32 gigabytes of space on them, the Chromebooks do. Um, as you see, this video file is only a little under 2 megabytes, um, and 1,024 megabytes makes 1 gigabyte, so there's a lot of space, but this file is only one minute long. So um, do keep that in mind that as you're making these um, lectures and things like that, that file size is important, the resolution you record at, will uh, determine how large those files are. So if you can cut the quality down just a little bit in order to save space, uh, save them download time, and space on the computer, then that would probably be appreciated better. Now, um, that's how we would um, download files. We also want to be able to clean up after we're done. After they've uh, used those files and are done with them, uh, they need to be able to remove them, which is a very easy uh, method too. Um, again, from that files uh, app that we're working in, we can select the file, um, double click on it, and uh, do delete, or there's the delete button at the top there. Okay, the method will get rid of that file, put it in their trash can, and um, give them the space back so they can use it for future files. Um, one uh, recommendation um, is that the students should very much try to keep organized with their files. Not only do they need to be available offline, they need to be able to find them <laughs> when they need them. So making folders um, on their, in their drive or on their computer to keep those documents organized and easily accessible will go a long way to help them finding those files again once they've downloaded, downloaded them. And then um, making sure that they take a few seconds before they leave school each time to, to remind themselves where their files are actually at. Are they um, just shared with them? Are they in their own personal drive? Or are they on the device? Um, taking time to, to think about that. And then uh, one last piece of advice would be to pick a few programs and get good at those um, before branching out into others. So uh, let's say you're going to use Google Classroom, Screencast-O-Matic to record videos. Um, pick those few. Uh, applications, get very familiar with them, and then share what you've learned with your colleagues so they too can benefit from that research that you've done.